This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey everyone, this is Linda Jo Miller, Lieutenant Susan Watson in King Kong Escapes. You are listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the Past. Mmm, he will gorilla your dreams. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming Sharon Smythe-Lentz. Sharon, of course, she played, are you ready for this? She played Sarah Collins on Dark Shadows, the classic horror soap opera from the late 60s. She was on from one season, 67 to 68, and I'm having her on today, and I can't wait. She was the adorable, freckle-faced, brown-haired girl, and... We're going to talk about her memories of being on that show and what happened afterwards. Lately, in the last decade or so, she's been acting and producing in short films and uh, a couple feature-length indie films as well. And, of course, uh, she does the occasional autograph show. And it's going to be a great conversation. I can't wait. I reached out to her a year ago, but the timing wasn't right. So... We're going to finally make it right today, and I can't wait. Oh, is the strike over yet? Is it almost over? Is it getting close? I hope so. I really do. Netflix sales are going skyrocket from what I've been uh, hearing. I don't want to cancel my Netflix, though. I just love Netflix, and I love the shows that they produce. So, yeah, here is my interview with Sharon Smythe Lentz. Hey, Sharon. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Hi there. I'm wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. This is such a great honor. Thank you so much for finally taking the time today. (laughs) Sure thing. So, going back in time, what age did you officially start gravitating toward acting? Well, I don't know that I gravitated towards it, but I crossed paths with uh, an Asian, a child acting agent um, serendipitously, I guess, uh, with my mother when I was about five and a half years old. They crossed paths. The the woman, whose name was Florence Creasy, she was very popular at the time, um, working with children, and she said, have you ever thought about your daughter doing some modeling work or, you know, print ads, whatever? And my mom was like, no, because my mom was uh, just... Uh, she worked, she stayed at home, she wasn't out working, and she was a wife of a blue-collar worker, and that was never off on the table. <laughs> so, um, so they did exchange phone numbers. This was long before we had texting and, and whatnot, but they exchanged phone numbers. And in less than a month's time, the woman called my mother and said, can you take Sharon up to New York for an audition? Mm-hmm. And... I don't know what my mother was thinking, but she said, sure. And we went up and I did get, I did get that job as a matter of fact, um, because specifically because of my freckles and pigtails, I think that was the look that they wanted at the time. And one thing led to another. Next thing you know, I was getting calls on a regular, well, my mother was getting calls on a regular basis like that to go up to New York for auditions for various things from from modeling, runway modeling, believe it or not, they used children back then. I don't know if they still do or not, but um, some of the the big houses up, the fashion houses up there were doing it, and print ads, and eventually I auditioned for a commercial. The commercial was for Post Cereal. Yeah. Burger Crisps back then. (laughs) (laughs) Now they call it Honey Crisps, I think. (laughs) It's a but yeah, I, I got that commercial and had an absolute blast doing the commercial. It was it was just so much fun, and I think my mother also enjoyed the experience of being around a production like that as well. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that, that You don't hear those kind of stories anymore. Now it's a completely different world with the internet and everything oh, and getting absolutely. discovered. Yeah. Are you born and raised in Philly? I am. Yes, I am. Yeah. Nice little row house in northeast Philly. 
I'm a huge fan of cheesesteaks. They're so bad for you, but so good. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. I love a good cheesesteak myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, obviously, because you had the best ones over there. <laughs> so you modeled first. I mean, were you modeling like Sears catalogs and, and all that too? Yes, Sears catalog and um, also Spiegel catalog. Mm -hmm. They were, I think they were com competitors at the time, but I, I did model for both of them. I did some uh, Christmas layouts and I have some cute pictures left from that time. Um, who else did I model for? I, I did a couple for a bank, mm -hmm. uh, for some of their, their print advertisements for a bank. And uh, yeah, I can't remember all of them, but... It was what we did at that time for the next couple of years. We were pretty active going back and forth to New York. Mm -hmm. My father was, you know, a working man here, and we had a house here in Philly, but my mom and I would take the, the Trailways bus up to New York and do our thing, and if we sometimes we stayed overnight, sometimes we came right. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was an adventure. It was definitely an adventure. The, the bus drivers at the Trailways station knew us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I actually saw a commercial you did for Pepto Bismol on YouTube. Oh, I bet they got the bug. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. You're in the classroom. Yeah. Yep. That is so cool. So, I, after, after I did that commercial and I came back to school here in Philadelphia in a, in a parochial school, I was tortured by that by other children they would you know sneak up behind me and go like that they got the bug and i'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah they do that <laughs> yeah so that's so cool pepto bisbol sugar crisp anything else did you endorse oh yeah uh campbell's kodak mm -hmm. uh oh my goodness uh sun oil, sun oil not sun oil the one with the the top, remember um lots lots there, there is even products that don't even exist anymore. Which of course. Times when I, when I look back at the list of, of that was on my resume back then, I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. Toys, um, things like that. But they were, they were always, um, they were always a chance. I even got flown to Georgia one time for a commercial. I don't remember what it was for. I just remember everything that happened that day from, from the ride to the dog on set <laughs> um, when you're when you're little uh, things that stick well for me anyway the things that stick in my memory um, I guess anyone else would find rather obscure they have to do with senses more than actual people memories um, I couldn't tell you what the director looked like but I can tell you what the dog looked like <laughs> Oh, yeah, I totally get it. Like, uh, I just found out the other day that there was a restaurant that doesn't exist anymore that existed in the 70s and early 80s called uh, Lum's Restaurant. Do you remember that? Lum's? No. Yeah, it was like a, a hamburger and hot dog place, and, like, Milton Berle was the spokesman in the commercials and stuff. <laughs> oh, wow, cool. Yeah, I didn't even know about that. It was from, like, 75 to 82 or something. It wasn't long. So you, you get cast on a couple episodes of Search for Tomorrow. How did that come to you? Yeah, I, that was just another um, audition that went on. They, they required a little girl, you know, pink tails and freckles, and I fit that bill. I think during that time period in the, in the uh, oh, that'd be early 60s, um, that was very much the American look for a little girl. Um, so I was lucky in that. But... I, I got the role in, on Search for Tomorrow, and there really wasn't, if I remember correctly, there wasn't really a lot of lines necessary for that. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there. But I got the experience of working with some really great actors. Mm -hmm. um, I can't even stand by name so many years, but had been watching Search for Tomorrow long before when you had to meet some of the main characters from Search for Tomorrow when we were on set, she was just enthralled by it. Um, it was it was a great opportunity for her too, but she was always very very nervous because I was just I was just a little girl, uh, you know, seven years old, eight years old, whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, she was always afraid I was gonna mess up <laughs> mess up her her soap opera, you know. But um, I didn't. 
it was fun. I even got to have an asthma attack on that show before they sent me off to Arizona as far as the, the plot was you know, my health. But yeah. yeah, that was a great experience. And that, that show, Search for Tomorrow, was done live um, at that time. It was it started out, it was only a 15-minute soap opera. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it so goes quick. But, um, yeah, I was on that for, for a while. Somewhere between, um, I guess, from 65 to 66 in there. Not the full year, mm -hmm. but um, quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I, I'd never even seen that show. Like, I, I don't even know what it was about. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah. I think, well, I, I think I still have some of the scripts from it. It was, wow. it was you know, back then it was your typical soap opera. Who's cheating on who and who's falling in love with who. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could miss a couple episodes and still pick it up. You know, you'd be fine. So that uh, show is what led to Dark Shadows? Well, not necessarily led to it. It was just, um, I got another audition after the, I was off of that for a little bit. I got another audition uh, for Dark Shadows, but at that time I had no idea what Dark Shadows was, what it was about. I hadn't watched it, didn't know about it. So, you know, you just kind of go in blindly and they give you a few lines to read and they give you the once over and... Uh, I did that twice. I had I got a call back. First time I went, there was a whole lot of girls there, and uh, second time we got called back within a couple of days, and met some more people. And then next thing we know, we got a phone call for me to come in for a costume fitting. Mm -hmm. I didn't even get an official. You're hired. Um, <laughs> it was the costume fitting kind of gave us the clue, and then told us when to show up, and. The rest is history, I guess. Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful, fun experience, Dark Shadows was. And again, I got to meet an awful lot of, of wonderful actors and actresses and slash people in general. Even the the, uh, the crew, I always had fun with the crew. They, I think they liked having a little kid around. I don't know. Did, did you beat out hundreds of girls for the role? fact, but I do know that the first audition I went, there was a lot of little girls there. Um, and it came down to two girls. The other girl being a friend of mine in the business, Eileen Burrell, and mm -hmm. uh, she was very waif-like, blonde hair, big blue eyes. She had played a ghost in some other shows, so I guess I kind of assumed that she would get the part because we were so drastically different. Mm -hmm. But that was not the case, and, and I've said this before, and I don't know this fact, but in retrospect, I, I can't help the reason that they picked me over her, not was because not because I was any better of an actress, but I had the look that they wanted. Um, dark, uh, Jonathan Frid, who played Barnabas, mm -hmm. was very dark, you know, dark hair, dark eyes, yeah. and um, the matriarch in the show, Joan Bennett, was also dark, and since I was a family member, I can only guess that that had something to do with it. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a groundbreaking show for its time, you know, and I, I'll tell you, I've met and interviewed horror movie actors who grew up watching the show, and in some cases, it was their only reference for horror until they got older, you know, like Barbara Crampton, she told me she was a huge fan of the show growing up. She used to watch it like, like every day after school. <laughs> right, right. Well, it was so, so different than anything else on TV at that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not I, we jokingly say not your mother's soap opera, even though it ended up a lot of mothers watching it. Um, yeah. It wasn't the same kind of storyline. It had this gothic romance to it. And I think from what I understand from the stories that I've been told, when teenagers saw that, at, you know, at first glance, it was like, whoa, stop, what is this? Yeah. And it was so different from the norm that they were drawn to that, as teenagers will do. You know, let's do something that's far, far away from what our parents like. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my opinion. 
Absolutely. So was the uh, the shooting process like a typical soap opera where you had to memorize like 50 pages of dialogue a day and if you fucked up once you were fired? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, there were some guidelines and restrictions there in the set because it was what they called at the time live tape, which mm -hmm. meant you didn't get do-overs, you didn't uh, do a scene four times before you got it right. You didn't have that opportunity. It was it was filmed more like a play mm -hmm. than anything. You kept moving. If you messed up, you pick it up where you know to do and just keep moving forward, keep the dialogue going. Um, no, you know, slapping your knee and saying, oh, crap. You know, there was none of that. Yeah. If you messed up, you just kept going. And I, and I don't think... Um, I don't think there was a single cast member over the, the 1,200 episodes that didn't fumble or lose a line here or there. It was the nature of the beast. You, you're right in, in that the scripts were, were turning over constantly. Um, mm -hmm. You'd get a script like a week ahead of time. You had time to, to preview, you know, to, to per peruse it on your own. Um, and then you would go in for rehearsal and they would slash pages of dialogue. You know, it'd be like, no, nope, we're not doing that, and changing it. And I think for the adults, not so much for me, but for the adults, that had to be a hard adjustment, you know, to do that. It's hard enough to remember all of that dialogue and to be able to, to do it and say it in such a way that it seems natural. Mm -hmm. And then to, to change all that has got to be tough. <laughs> but they did yeah. it, and... Uh, like I said, no one at the time ever expected that we would still be watching it 50 plus years later. Right. So the, the thinking at the time was, okay, you, you messed up a line. No big deal. Keep moving. Nobody's going to remember. Most people aren't even going to notice. Um, but now, because of it's been viewed zilly times by, you know, loving fans, they've, they've compiled all of the the screw ups. Yeah. <laughs> to play out blooper tapes, you know. Yeah. So I'm sure I'm so I'm sure that a lot of the adult actors kind of cringe a little bit when that happens because you know everybody there took pride in what they were doing. I mean, this some people have called Dark Shadows camp, uh, tongue in cheek, whatever. But the actors and actresses that were involved in that project were doing it absolutely sincerely to the best of their abilities. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a joke. It was, it was dead serious. And if, if you look at the, the scripts, the dialogue, the storylines, they're classics. They're mm -hmm. amazing, actually, when you follow through and you think, wow, where did they come up with this? And there are places to look where you can see very similar storylines and, um, you know, they work then. Why wouldn't they work now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dan Curtis was, Dan Curtis was a genius. Um, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he wanted. And that was to step off the, the line and go a little mm, left, you know? <laughs> yeah. The show was not the abs family. <laughs> Family, but it also wasn't General Hospital, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I've talked to Catherine Lee Scott. She's a real old school, show busy kind of gal. What was she like to work with? She was sweet. She um, she was young. It was her first real uh, soap opera. She had done some other things. She was actually, I think still in acting school at the time, or maybe she had just graduated, I'm not sure, but she was very young. And, um, you know, a, a true professional. I mean, most of the, well, I should say all of the actors and actresses that I worked with on Dark Shadows, they were absolutely professional. They might have been a little bit crazy in their real lives or, you know, <laughs> off set, whatever, but yeah. when they, when they got in front of the camera they were absolutely professional and did what was expected of them we all did yeah John Carlin I, I grew up watching him on Cagney and Lacey I thought he was great is he great to work with oh my gosh yes one of my favorites he was hysterical he was 
I don't know if, if this even applies anymore, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, but back in the day, my mom used to um, use the term Peck's bad boy. And I always <laughs> thought of John Carlin like that because he pushed the limits of what he could get away with when he was joking around and, and things like that. I specifically remember one time crouching behind the set, one mm -hmm. of the walls of the set, like, guess we were due to go up soon. And you, know, you have to be quiet. Uh, can't have a full-on conversation or anything but we're crouched back there and I remember him saying to me um, are you starstruck by all of this I was 10 years old yeah and I looked at him and I had absolutely no idea what he was talking about but because I was a little bit cocky mm -hmm. at that age I was like no, absolutely not. <laughs> I had no idea what the man was talking about, but the fact that he talked to me uh, as a, almost like a peer, um, mm -hmm. he wasn't talking down to me, he was talking to me, you know, and I, and I wanted to, to elevate myself to that position. <laughs> I was like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was, he was a fireball. He, yeah, great personality. New York actor, yeah. Uh, Laura Parker. Laura Parker, um, I didn't actually get to work with her a lot, only a few scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and in general, I always looked at her as, I always looked at her kind of at a distance, that she was beautiful and poised and elegant. And I, that, that was my impression um, of a 10 year old towards, towards her. Um, you know, you have to remember, I didn't have a lot of social interaction with the adults. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was, again, I was 10 years old. My mother kept me close. You know, I didn't get to wander and roam and get into trouble. I was in my dressing room or I was on the set, um, or in the, um, uh, rehearsal room. That was, that was really about it. So, I didn't have the advantage of going out after, um, you know, and, and having dinner with people or, or discussing things like that. Unfortunately, I would have would have liked to known these people better. Now, granted, over the years from going to Dark Shadows conventions and whatnot, yeah, I have gotten. I don't know if closer is the right word because we've always been like family when we get together it's just like very comfortable yeah. um, but I've gotten to know them as people uh, over the years and without exception I can't think of anybody that rubs anybody the wrong way <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they call them a, an ensemble cast because they played lots of different roles yeah. to work together really it really Kind of like family, me. But I know that the they still, some of them still hang out together. And uh, obviously, the only time I really do is when I get to go to conventions, which they've kind of petered out because I don't know, aged out after fifty-five years. I'm not sure. Yeah, still are dark <laughs> shadows events, just not conventions like back in the eighties. Oh yeah, conventions now are way different. I mean, I didn't go to conventions until 2016, but like, uh, there's a documentary that came out in 86 that was a very big VHS seller when I was a kid throughout my childhood of the first Fangoria uh, convention. And like, I, I watch it now and I can see how different they were back then as opposed to now, you know? And, you know, uh, everyone, all the all the celebrities signed uh, autographs for free, and the lines were a lot smoother, and everybody going in and out and stuff. It was a much different world back then. Absolutely. Now, I heard you say in a previous interview that uh, occasionally pranks were played on the set, including one involving you in a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened? It rains on me. <laughs> there were there were times when David and I had the opportunity to uh, roam the set or the studio. Uh huh. Uh, a loose game. We were playing a loose game of hide and seek. Yeah. And it was David's suggestion that I get into the coffin. It'd be a great place to hide. And uh, naively, I did. And he sat on top of it. Ah. 
And it was my time to be on another set. You know, I was like, you have to let me out. I'm, I'm going to get where I'm supposed to be, you know? Yeah. But uh, he, he, was, he was very funny, but he was... Uh, uh, a lot of hijinks, you know. Yeah. He was he was smart. <laughs> he was smart. That is scary. I would have been just claustrophobic the rest of my life if that happened. Well, as a matter of fact, I am claustrophobic. I don't know if that's why or not, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might be. You make a good point. I mean, I do have a little bit of claustrophobia. I mean, I've been in those um, those aquarium tanks where the sharks and the dolphins are, like, swimming all around you. And, oh, my God, it just right. gives me the willies because it just makes me think that they're going to come at me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it was shot at Studio 16 uh, ABC in Manhattan? Yes. Yeah. Have you been back there since? I was a couple times, but... To my understanding, it's not even there anymore. Wow. I know. I know that it was that studio was used uh, for other shows afterwards. Right. Uh, a couple of talk shows, I think. But um, yeah, my understanding within the last couple of years is it's, it's not even physically there anymore. But it was a great studio, and and it was unique in that a lot of other companies. Uh, had to move around. They they only had like a small section inside of a, a studio building, and when they had to change sets, it was there was a whole lot more involved in it. Yeah, we had the entire studio, and you can actually find prints online uh, of the layout mm -hmm. of, of the studio itself, and it was rather narrow and long, but. They didn't have to change out sets as often. You know, you could go from the cemetery to the blue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just by walking a few, you know, but um, they, it gave the illusion, all of the sets gave the illusion of something far bigger um, than what it was. It was just phenomenal the way they did that. Yeah. Uh, do you know if any of those sets got archived or, you know, auctioned off? Um, I did hear that one of the main sets, I think, where the one of the fireplaces did get off. Mm -hmm. Don't hold me to that fact. I'm not absolutely sure. But then I did hear a, a different story that said a, a part of a set that had been stored with intention got destroyed. I, I don't know if it was by fire or by what, but um, they're just things I've heard over the years. I don't actually know. Um, yeah, it's sad when, when history like that is just erased. It really is. Well, we're fortunate to have a lot of pictures, a lot of behind the scenes. Um, I, I belong to a, a half a dozen or more Dark Shadows fan groups online, mm -hmm. and uh, they're always coming up with new stuff that, you know, has been found, uh, an artifact, for lack of a better word, from the show. Um, and also, uh, Catherine Lee Scott has a couple of, of wonderful books on Dark Shadows that are mm -hmm. really chock full of information as far as you know locations and how things were done and love pictures so i'm grateful that that still exists that we're not you know erased completely yeah it, it still it still baffles my mind that 55 years later there are still thousands literally thousands of people that are just excited about dark shadows yeah <laughs> well, I mean, look, I mean, Tim Burton did the movie, and there was a reboot in the early 90s. I mean, I mean, it, it kept on, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, did you like any I, of those uh, remakes? The, the 90s show was, I think, uh, costumes, uh, script, all of that, really good, really well done. Unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't last. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot going on in in the world at that time uh, with regard to war and whatnot and, and constantly breaking in on the show and the news. And it, it it didn't really get a full call. But what they did do was, was wonderful as far as I'm concerned. Um, when the movie, the Johnny Depp movie came out, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of, of talk, a lot of... Uh, 
division and polarization with regard to that because mm-hmm. a lot of the old time Dark Shadows fans were really looking forward to something else. Uh, you know, it had it had big money involved, it had big names involved. Um, we really had high hopes for it. And ultimately that wasn't the case. It it took a completely different direction than Dark Shadows. But at the same time, I'm grateful that they did not the original cast and had some of the original cast included, albeit it was very short and sweet, but they did get some airtime on there, which was nice, including Jonathan. Um, right. Uh, um, you, but did, yeah, it, 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 it's hard to develop, I think, it's hard to develop characters and relationships in a couple hours yeah. from a show that had over 1,200 episodes. It's just not the same thing, and I don't know how you could remedy that. Maybe just taking one section of the show, one storyline, because the storyline in Dark Shadows changed constantly. You know, yes, there were some main characters along the way, but it, it went all over the place. I mean, it was from Phoenix to, to ghosts and zombies and Frankenstein type characters and you know you can't cram all that into two hours at least yeah you yeah know, that's just my opinion i'm, just, I'm not the, the, just, you know i'm just the, saying the attention span really changed you know over time of course <laughs> yeah and on the other hand i tell lots of people that you know roll their eyes about dark shadows um you know it's, it's too old it's it's doesn't meet the requirements, you know, of CGI and, and sound effects and all that good stuff. And I always say to them, go watch three episodes. Just watch three episodes. Mm-hmm. I almost guarantee you that you will get sucked in. Yeah. Um, even even with all that I know about Dark Shadows and, and, you know, having been involved with Dark Shadows and the fandom, if I sit down to watch any part of Dark Shadows, not just my part, but any part of Dark Shadows, I become involved. I become emotionally involved, and I don't think that I'm the only one. Yes, there are technical screw-ups in there. Um, Yes, there are things that happen that you go, oh, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Somebody just walked on set. (laughs) Whatever. It's almost like, (laughs) I don't know if this is fair to compare it this way, but it's, it's almost like when you watch a puppet show, yeah. And you allow yourself the fantasy, you mm-hmm. allow yourself to be involved with the characters, and you almost forget that they've got hands shoved up their balloon, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think of shadows sometimes that way. If you just allow yourself the fantasy, it, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I have watched Sarah, little Sarah's dying scene, mm-hmm. many, many times, many times. I know what happens, <laughs> but I still get filled up when I watch it because it's intense. It's it's paced in such a way that you're 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 like moving up on the edge of your seat when you're watching it. You're like, no, she can't die. You know? yeah. <laughs> and again, I don't think that's just because it was me. I mean, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have to have a, a non set tutor? I did not. It probably would have been a good idea if I did, but I didn't. Um, I went to school during during the year that I was on Dark Shadows. Mm-hmm. Um, I lived in New York. It, be, it became too much to go back and forth because I was on shows back to back. So my my mother took an apartment in New York City, and we lived up there. Um, so I went to school that I at, it, it was like a professionals school. Children that couldn't abide by the regular standards of for truancy and whatnot. Yeah. Um, there were very wealthy children there. There were children in the business. There were children from out of the country. You know, everybody had a different story. But um, it was called the Mace School. Mrs. Mace ran the school, and it was in a brownstone in New York. And uh, I actually took two grades at the same time. It was third and fourth grade at the same time, which was confusing because I was learning French and Spanish at the same time. <laughs> I never did really master that, but um, so I went to I went to school 
you know, and if I had to not be there, I got my lessons and I did them at home. And I, I managed to keep good grades um, under those circumstances. But then when I was done Dark Shadows and I came back to Philadelphia and went back to my regular school, there was a transition period where it was a little bit tough because they were, I felt they were further ahead than I had gotten. But, um, but I caught up. I did fine. Absolutely. It wasn't in high school that I got ornery. <laughs> you seem more well-adjusted than a lot of child actors I've talked to. <laughs> uh, don't be so sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't worry, I got questions. Um, <laughs> do you have any? Uh, do you have any favorite episodes? Um, of Dark Shadows. Yeah. I loved when I got to wear my pink nightwear. Uh -huh. On it and my that's that, a good one. Whatever scene that that was that was good. Um, yeah, I think I liked being alive more than I liked being dead. But <laughs> <laughs> you can, when I when I go to conventions and I and I offer eight by tens to to autograph, I always tell them all the black and white, I'm dead. All the colored pictures I'm alive. So you pick. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of un then unknown prominent actors that guest starred on that show but I noticed a lot of them were there either before or after you uh, Harvey Keitel, Conrad Bain, Abe Vigoda Marsha Mason, Gail Strickland wow that's amazing it is absolutely I, I've said that over the years too that so many actors that we, we know now I mean famous actors started out or or had a gig on Dark Shadows. Just amazing, the list of actors and actresses. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I grew up watching this movie when I was a when I was a preteen in the '90s called Now and Then, and there's a poster of Barnabas on um, one of the girls' walls in the movie because it takes place in 1970. Mm. What what movie had the the poster? Do you remember? It was called Now and Then. Oh, it was on the show. Okay. Yeah, in the movie. Cool. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was cool. So, were you written out of the series, or did you quit? Well, I didn't quit. Um, basically, my contract ran out, and I got a very nice professional letter thanking me for my service. And you know, they were moving on with their storyline. Uh, over the years, a lot of the fans have said to me, you know, they had this seance where they went back, you know, 1875 and there I am and then when they came back from the aunt, never nobody ever mentioned my name again <laughs> what happened <laughs> I don't know um, yeah I mean you know contract ran out storyline finished and no big deal I mean we let we parked it happily yeah. you know and, and at that time not having any clue the impact Dark Shadows was going to have um it was no big deal. It was just another job that I fulfilled my obligation, and and life goes on. Um, not a bad, not a bad thing at all. I mean, it wasn't like I got drunk at ten years old and they fired me or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, after you left, uh, a new little girl came on the show for a while. Uh, Denise Nickerson, who later played Violet and Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, and yeah. She got sick before I could interview her because I interviewed uh, Veruca Salt, Julie Don Cole, and she was going to try to connect us, but she got sick and lost her voice um, uh, not long after I interviewed her, so unfortunately it never happened. But um, yeah, so you just wanted to live a, a life like a normal person after a while, huh? Yeah, well, when I was done with Dark Shadows, we did do a little bit more as far as uh, print ads and commercials. But by the time I was 13 years old, I really didn't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and by that, I mean I didn't want to be going up to New York. I didn't want to be in competition with other girls. I, I just I wanted to hang out with my friends at home like a quote-unquote normal child. Mm -hmm. um, I was 13. I started to get a bad attitude, you know, giving my mom a hard time. And basically my parents, who were not stage parents at all, um, said, hey, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to do this. Um, so really the transition was not a big deal for us. It was just something I done 
thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, no horror stories, just didn't want to do it anymore. And, you know, I'm sure that you've heard plenty of teenage stories where, you know, Oh, yeah. One minute they're in, one minute they're into soccer, and then one day they just aren't into soccer anymore. You know, and they're into marijuana yeah. or other drugs. <laughs> mhm. So. Yeah, I was, I was gonna. Know, oh, I was gonna ask you. Yeah, I mean, uh, were you a rebellious teenager? Yes, very much so. Um, I didn't get into any major trouble. I was never arrested or anything like that. But yeah, I have a low profile and wanted to be and do everything that my friends were doing. So it was a lot of, I wouldn't say peer pressure because I did it willingly. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, skipping school and smoking and, and stuff like that. Just, you know, I had my few years of that for sure. I saw this interview you did in the late eighties on YouTube where you had like short hair and it was all teased up really eighties style. Uh, yep. My eighties hair. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, wow, she must have been rebellious for a while af after, you know, Dark Shadows. You, you looked like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just having fun. <laughs> yeah, but eventually, I mean, obviously you came out of it and everything, and that's what I meant by, you know, well-adjusted, because there's certain child actors I've talked to, it's just like, you know, they're they're completely gone, you know. There's, just, there's, there's a piece of them that's missing, sadly. Well, I've been very, very fortunate because when I was in the business doing all of this back and forth to New York and being around of a lot of adults and, and hearing and seeing things that I could without, my parents, specifically my mom, really kept me, um, I don't want to say on the straight and narrow because they weren't like that. They weren't, you know, cracking the whip or anything like that, but they were very loving and very understanding and made it clear to me that I wasn't special Mm -hmm. that I still had to do chores and I still had to do homework and, you know, I couldn't get away with mouthing off to anybody. Uh, I, was a, I was a good girl. And uh, they, they saw to that, that I kept schedules and I, I did what I said I was going to do. So I think that had a, a huge impact on me uh, as far as knowing right from wrong and, and actually, like, abiding by it. And, you know, left to my own devices after I was 17, 18 years old, things got a little crazy, sure. Um, it was like I got let out, you know? It was yeah. like, <laughs> what can I do that I shouldn't be doing? Um, I did that for a few years. And I guess after the age of 25, I really cleaned up my act and, uh, and got serious about life and, and future and, and whatnot. And now I'm a happy old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm happily married and quote unquote. So I still I still dip my toe in though. Um, I like to go to horror conventions and nostalgia mm -hmm. conventions and and meet lots of people because I just love the people, the fans, the stories. It's great. I get to meet some other um, actors and actresses. I like that. And and over the years, I've done I've done stage work. Mm -hmm. um, with community theaters and I've done independent films with new filmmakers and producers and it's fun. It's fun. I, I, what an opportunity I have um, to, to meet all these, these people that, that connect mm -hmm. but there's so much more than that. Yeah, uh, in the last decade, you've been doing a lot of short films and a couple of uh, indie feature-length films. Um, you you produced and had a part in Roxy and Me, and I watched that on YouTube the other night. Uh, how did you get involved with that? Actually, in the neighborhood paper, I had seen a cover article on this young couple that were um, filmmakers, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh my gosh, they're in my community, and I don't know anything about them. So I, I picked up the phone and I called and spoke with them and I didn't really tell them who I was as far as Dark Shadows or anything like that was concerned. I just said that, you know, I was somebody in the community that would love to be involved and uh, would love to talk to them. So they, they, we met for lunch and we got along famously. And the next thing you know, I'm involved in their productions. Uh, I've, I've been an assistant, assistant, uh -huh. I've, I've emptied trash cans, I've done makeup, I've done sound, I've, 
you know, lighting. I got a little taste of a lot of things by working with them, and they were young and just so full of enthusiasm and ideas. And I tell you what, it makes your blood pump. Yeah, you know, it really does. Yeah, I, I thought it was a nice little commentary on goth culture and how show business works in the millennial generation, and it was it was a pretty cute little short film. I actually laughed uh, when uh, you had your cell phone. You're like, "Is that puppy cute?" <laughs> <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. So, so how long have you been doing the autograph shows for overall? Oh, I started going back to conventions back in, in 86, I guess it was. Wow, so so Dark Shadows was being represented at the cons back then? I didn't know that. Oh, absolutely. They had their own conventions, Dark Shadows Festival conventions. Um, even before that, I my first one, uh, first gathering was in 86. And then they were having them in... in the East Coast and the West Coast alternately, mm -hmm. and I've never been to the West Coast conventions into uh, half dozen or more, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, East Coast conventions. And uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of fun meeting people. I've also done other kinds of conventions um, for different people, in, mm -hmm. mostly in the tri-state area. I have been to South Carolina and uh, couple other places can't even think now over the years they have nostalgia conventions or um oh yeah kind of horror convention that kind of thing i've never i've never been to i've never participated in some of the really big ones uh -huh. um, for whatever reason i i over the years haven't had representation yeah. um just been on my own uh, you know, word of mouth. Somebody that's a says, good, oh, I know Shatterin, and she'll be more than happy to, you know. So yeah. that's kind of the way it's been. It's not like I had somebody out there scouting them out for me. Because I know there are many, many, many. But that's you know, a, also there was a period of time in there from from 90 to, I'm um, sure when, the mm -hmm. late 90s, where I didn't do anything. Uh, I was raising my children. I had my first child at 90, in 91, and mm -hmm. really felt, I really was compelled to be at all costs all the time, and uh, I just, I couldn't go for a weekend and just, like, leave my kids, so there were years in there where I just corresponded with fans um, over the phone. Yeah, that's a good thing not because not conventions. Yeah, that's that's a good thing though. A lot of um, a lot of managers in the convention scene are not good guys. I'll tell you, I've I've had to do the deal with some of them. So you're lucky you're on your own. Yeah, I just you know I it wasn't something that I needed personally to do or I financially depended on it. Yeah. Um, I was in a different position than a lot of people. I just do it for fun. I just do it because I do it for the fans. And I said to my husband, you know, I don't want to be that that actress in the corner over there where people are saying, who's that old lady over there? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't want to stay past my time, you know, but as long as I'm being asked specifically and uh, I appear to be able to bring in some fans and I'll do it you know it's not it's not for the money it's not for the ego it's just for fun absolutely that's what it should be now here's a, here's a question I ask all the time what's the craziest thing anybody has ever asked you to sign oh my goodness a body part yes I knew what? it I knew it people have told me especially <laughs> in the horror genre they told me they've had to sign body parts <laughs> bizarre, especially since they were a little bit stupid at the time, and it was really hard to make a nice signature. <laughs> I felt weird doing it because like, I was old enough to be their mom, mm -hmm. and I kept thinking to myself, like, oh, honey, you don't want this tattooed on you. <laughs> You're going to regret this. But, you know, it happens. Have you, have you ever, scenario, they changed their mind and washed it off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever signed the belly button? Um, no. No, I, not a belly button. 
I've, I've, uh, I know an actress, she, she signs belly buttons, but she won't go lower, she said. <laughs> yeah, really. But she... Fine yeah. line. <laughs> yeah, but she will sign the belly button, she told me. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Some of the fans out there are just nuts. I, I go for the posters, the 8x10s, the, the Blu-ray DVD, that kind of a thing. My, my, I, sure. you know, I collect old VHS tapes from way back when, and the ones that are good condition, I'll get signed, you know, because they mean a lot to me but i don't go for body parts no but i would let her sign my belly button just because i know she does it (laughs) yeah and uh how's your health these days um i'm fairly healthy i'm a little overweight but uh (laughs) you know we all i guess we all could say that right um yeah we we just found out that i have cataracts though i'm gonna have to deal with that oh the eye doctor said to me, I had into an eye doctor since before the pandemic, um, and I was having a little problem, so I went in, and he was like, he kind of stopped examining me and looked back and, and said, seeing? And I'm like, I don't know, I guess not. I'm, I'm you know, I, I feel like I'm okay. He said, your lenses are really dirty, and I thought, I thought that was my glasses. <laughs> my that- glasses. Yeah. No. <laughs> Did that happen? To, was that a year ago when um, when I first DM'd you about coming on? You you said that there was some uh, there were some health issues going on. Was it that? Oh no, that that wasn't for me. That was about my husband. Oh, the last okay. three years, my husband has had oh two dozen surgeries. Um, for everything, come Sunday, from skin cancer to bladder problems to Ooh. prostate problems, you name it. Um, he had lots of knee surgeries and shoulder surgeries, and he ultimately had his leg amputated and uh, believe it or not he's been doing much better since he had his leg amputated uh, he's healthier oh. it was literally killing him the infection in his in his leg what is it diabetes no everybody asks him that but no he does not have diabetes he, he got a um, he had MRSA 10 years ago mm-hmm. and you know got a handle on that and cleaned that up and then uh what, three, four years ago, he got a new infection that they didn't call it MERS, but it was not responding to uh, antibiotics, which they tried several different kinds of antibiotics on him, and the infection just was relentless, absolutely relentless. It was horrible. Um, they go in there, they change out parts, they clean it out, whatever, whatever, and it just wasn't improving, and his health was getting worse and worse. Um, he got sepsis and almost lost him. And I, I'm happy to say that he's doing much better. He's only got one, but he is doing great. <laughs> so I'm happy about that. Yeah. Oh, my God. I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes last year, and I've been watching it since. I've lost like 45 pounds or so, and I have a lot more to wow. go. But yeah, that I just, my heart goes out to him. I'm sorry that he had to go through that. Yeah, it's it's terribly unfair. He's such a nice guy, and he's just been beat up. <laughs> it's yeah. a shame. But so, real quick, um, there's a secret silly game that I like to play with guests, and it's a series of silly celebrity party questions. No win or lose. It's just pure fun. And how the game works is, I ask you the question. You answer it, and then you ask me that exact same question, and I answer it. And feel free to comment on the answers because they might be funny. Okay. <laughs> okay, Sharon, are you ticklish? Yes. Are you ticklish? Oh yes. If you tickle me without warning, though, I might hit you in the groin. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yes. Next. <laughs> Is your belly button an innie or an Audi? Oh, it's definitely an innie. It was only an Audi when I was pregnant. Okay. Is your belly button an innie or an Audi? It's an innie. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what color are your toenails painted? Oh, they're not currently painted. I'm embarrassed. What to- what color are your toenails painted? Uh, they're not painted at the moment, but last time they were, they were purple lavender. Oh, nice. Mine were black the last time. <laughs> yeah, I like black to go. No uh, polish. I like to go elaborate colors. Um. What would you say is your best personality trait? I'm loyal to a fault. And what's your best personality trait? 
Well, I'm a Gemini, so I have empathy and no filter. Well, that's good. Actually, Gemini's and I are a perfect couple. Just want you to know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, we get along just fine, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Oh, my. Um, yes, yeah, sour milk. Yeah, that's is a bad there, one. Is there a smell that you don't like? Either farts or feet. <laughs> well, my feet don't smell. I'm not going to mention the other, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have a joke for you. Uh, what, what do you call a boy that doesn't masturbate? Uh, frustrated. A liar. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, frustrated is a, is a guess that a lot of people do. Here's, here, here's a joke I told Catherine, and she I, I don't think she was truly offended. I think she was just doing some shtick to, to, make, it, to make herself sound professional. I said, uh, you know the difference between a golf ball and a G-spot? A man rather spend 20 minutes looking for a golf ball. Mm, ain't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was like, do, 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 people la do people you tell laugh at that joke? And I was like, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was just being professional, I guess. So, Absolutely. So do you have any con appearances coming up? I do, actually. Um, I, I haven't agreed to do anything for some time between the pandemic and my time with my husband, um, you know, being a caregiver for him. But I did agree to a friend to do one in November. I think mid-November 11th sounds familiar to me. I don't have it in front of me, but um, it's in New Jersey. And um, man, I wish I could remember the name of their... Oh, poo. I can, I'm going to advertise the Facebook page, but it's... Uh, her husband is a comic book connoisseur and collector and seller. And they're having... They're hosting this... So. Uh-huh. Uh, it's going it's, it's gonna to be uh, going on around the time of your birthday. Yes. Yes, I'll, I'll remind her of that. Maybe we can celebrate that while I'm there. <laughs> yeah, your your birthday. You're so kind to me. Your your, your birthday is uh, nine months after my dad's. He was born in March of that year. <laughs> 1957. Yep. What a year! At any time, my dad finds out that someone was born in 1957. He always has to know when their birthday is. <laughs> November 29th. Yeah, you're Sagittarius. Is, is your dad on Facebook? He is, uh, Tommy Kovac Sr. Well, you'll have to tell him to friend request me on Facebook then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, he remembers Dark Shadows, so I'm sure uh, he would accept your request. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a Pisces, I'm a Gemini, and you're a Sagittarius. My brother uh, is a Sagittarius. His birthday is December 21st. He's going to be 50 this year. Nice. You're having a big celebration? No, we're very low-key in my family. We don't make a huge fuss about birthdays anymore. When I was a kid, though, oh, every year we had a party at my house or somewhere, and it was always crazy. I was always inviting all my classmates to come and everything and stuff. But, like, I don't know, in the past, I don't know, 25 years or so, n no, not a whole lot of celebrations. Not for any of us. We've, we've kind of right. remained low-key. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. Sharon, you are a national treasure. Thank you so much for coming on today. And I hope I get to meet you at a convention someday. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and be safe out there and, you know, remain being healthy and take care of that husband of yours. I sure will. Thank you so much for inviting me to have a chat with you. Absolutely. You have yourself a great day. All right, hon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. 
Sharon Lent, Sharon Smythe Lentz. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, what a great down-to-earth lady. And wow, who would have thought that she had been rebellious in her teen years? Wow, you learn something new every day. And she has a great sense of humor. And I'm just so glad that we got to talk today. That was wonderful. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes!